two tactics of social democracy in the democratic revolution by vladimir ilyich lenin preface in a revolutionary period it is very difficult to keep abreast of events which provide an astonishing amount of new material for an evaluation of the tactical slogans of revolutionary parties. The present pamphlet was written before the Odessa events. We have already pointed out in the Proletarii, number 9, Revolution Teaches, that these events have forced even those social democrats who created the uprising as a process theory and who rejected propaganda for a provisional revolutionary government actually to pass over or begin to pass over to the side of their opponents. Revolution undoubtedly teaches with a rapidity and thoroughness which appear incredible in peaceful periods of political development. And what is particularly important, it teaches not only the leaders but the masses as well. There is not the slightest doubt that the revolution will teach social democratism to the masses of the workers in Russia. The revolution will confirm the program and tactics of social democracy in actual practice by demonstrating the true nature of the various classes of society, by demonstrating the bourgeois character of our democracy, and the real aspirations of the peasantry, who, while being revolutionary in the bourgeois democratic sense, harbor not the idea of socialization, but of a new class struggle between the peasant bourgeoisie and the rural proletariat. The old illusions of the old narodism, which are so clearly visible, for instance, in the draft program of the Socialist Revolutionary Party on the question of the development of capitalism in Russia, the question of the democratic character of our society, and the question of the significance of a complete victory of a peasant uprising, all these illusions will be mercilessly and completely blown to the winds by the revolution. For the first time it will give the various classes their real political baptism. These classes will emerge from the revolution with a definite political physiognomy, for they will have revealed themselves, not only in the programs and tactical slogans of their ideologists, but also in the open political action of the masses. Undoubtedly, the revolution will teach us and will teach the masses of the people. But the question that now confronts a militant political party is, shall we be able to teach the revolution anything? Shall we be able to make use of the correctness of our social democratic doctrine of our bond with the only thoroughly revolutionary class, the proletariat, to put a proletarian imprint on the revolution, to carry the revolution to a real and decisive victory, not in word but in deed, and to paralyze the instability, half-heartedness, and treachery of the democratic bourgeoisie. It is to this end that we must direct all our efforts, and the achievement of it will depend, on the one hand, on the accuracy of our appraisal of the political situation, on the correctness of our tactical slogans, and, on the other hand, on whether these slogans will be backed by the real fighting strength of the masses of the workers. All the usual, regular, current work of all the organizations and groups of our party the work of propaganda, agitation, and organization is directed towards strengthening and expanding the ties with the masses. This work is always necessary, but in a revolutionary period less than in any other can it be considered sufficient. At such a time, the working class feels an instinctive urge for open revolutionary action. 
and we must learn to set the aims of this action correctly and then make these aims as widely known and understood as possible. It must not be forgotten that the current pessimism about our ties with the masses very often serves as a screen for bourgeois ideas regarding the role of the proletariat in the revolution. Undoubtedly, we still have a great deal to do to educate and organize the working class. But the whole question now is, where should the main political emphasis in this work of education and of organization be placed? On the trade unions and legally existing societies, or on an armed insurrection, on the work of creating a revolutionary army and a revolutionary government? Both serve to educate and organize the working class, both are, of course, necessary. But the whole question now, in the present revolution, amounts to this. What is to be emphasized in the work of educating and organizing the working class, the former or the latter? The outcome of the revolution depends on whether the working class will play the part of a subsidiary to the bourgeoisie, a subsidiary that is powerful in the force of its onslaught against the autocracy but impotent politically, or whether it will play the part of leader of the people's revolution. The more intelligent representatives of the bourgeoisie are perfectly aware of this. That is precisely why the Asvabazdenya praises Akimovism, economism in social democracy. The trend which is now placing the trade unions and the legally existing societies in the forefront. That is precisely why Mr. Struve welcomes the Akimovist trends in the principles of the new Iskra. That is precisely why he comes down so heavily on the detested revolutionary narrowness of the decisions of the Third Congress of the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party. It is exceptionally important at the present time for social democracy to have correct tactical slogans for leading the masses. There is nothing more dangerous in a revolutionary period than belittling the importance of tactical slogans that are sound in principle. For example, the Iskra in number 104 actually passes over to the side of its opponents in the social democratic movement, and yet at the same time disparages the importance of slogans and tactical decisions that are in front of the times, and indicate the path along which the movement is proceeding, with a number of failures, errors, etc. On the contrary, the working out of correct tactical decisions is of immense importance for a party which, in the spirit of the sound principles of Marxism, desires to lead the proletariat and not merely to drag at the tail of events. In the resolutions of the Third Congress of the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party and of the conference of the section which has seceded from the party, we have the most precise most carefully thought out, and the most complete expression of tactical views, views not casually expressed by individual writers, but accepted by the responsible representatives of the social democratic proletariat. Our party is in advance of all others, for it has a precise program, accepted by all. It must also set the other parties an example of strict adherence to its tactical resolutions, in contradistinction to the opportunism of the democratic bourgeoisie of the Asvabdzhenia, and the revolutionary phrase-mongering of the socialist revolutionaries, who only during the revolution suddenly thought of coming forward with a draft of a program and of investigating for the first time whether it is a bourgeois revolution that is going on in front of their eyes. 
That is why we think it a most urgent task of the revolutionary social democrats to study carefully the tactical resolutions of the Third Congress of the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party and of the conference to define what deviations there are in them from the principles of Marxism and to get a clear understanding of the concrete tasks of the social democratic proletariat in a democratic revolution. It is to this task that the present pamphlet is devoted. The testing of our tactics from the standpoint of the principles of Marxism and of the lessons of the revolution is also necessary for those who really desire to pave the way for unity of tactics as a basis for the future complete unity of the whole Russian Democratic Labor Party, and not to confine themselves solely to verbal admonitions. July 1905